Okay, we just got to collecting cars. I thought it was gonna be a better turnout than it is. Apparently it's more like a Viper meet, but there is like one or two decent cars here. I saw an LFA and a 300 SL, but it's our lineup. We have Anthony's Fiat, two M2s, Jason's GT3, my GT4, and a few other cars, but we're gonna walk, go walk around, see if anything I haven't heard of here, but I saw the LFA already and I heard there's a 300 SL here. Okay, good, good spec, 992. Silver wheels in a white car, don't see that a lot. Looks really cool. Carbon bucket, and it is a manual. Yeah. Another GT3, and I think it's Miami Blue. Also, carbon buckets. Oh, but this one's PDK, what a shame. What a shame. But probably the best car here, Lexus LFA. I think there's only two in the whole city. This one is the only one that actually gets driven. Obviously, V10, kind of known for being the best uh, sounding car ever made. But a very cool, like a white interior. Yeah, you never see these, and these are now kind of approaching like a million dollar mark, which is crazy for like a Lexus. People are bitching when they're 400 grand, so this is like huge, huge difference. Very cool car with a cool active arrow right there. Mechanical marble. Yeah, kind of like a Toronto car that just until recently never came out to meet or anything. Now finally you start seeing it around. It lost about 100 kids. That's not a Rosa Scuderia, yeah, that's some different Ferrari red, and that's... I've never seen this GT3 before, like a dark red with silver stripes, silver accents, silver wheels, it's pretty cool. Cool duo. Very good spec. I just noticed for this 996 Turbo, it pretty much has like a GT2... Oh, 300 SL, what the fuck? Okay, well I guess we need this 300 SL, but... 996 Turbo pretty much has like a GT2 interior at this point. It has the GT2 seats, rear seat delete. Well, actually, no, 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 rear seats are just down, but GT2 seats. Got a really cool shifter. Pretty cool. And GT3. And then there's an Aventador right there. Very cool STO on right I guess people are leaving now, but. Yeah, black with the red accents, the red stickers. Crazy part of the STOs, you got so much more grass in the performances. You have like the full roof. And the engine cover, you can't just flip it open. You gotta actually take the panel off. But yeah, this thing just looks crazy. And they made them rear wheel drive. And when you say you open the front, you gotta fully like, it's like a, like a, the full shell kind of comes off. But yeah, these things are got a lot more crazy. Cause I think the problem with the Huracons before that they're kind of boring. This is like a crazy improvement and the interior on this one is wild. So full red Alcantara. And I didn't actually realize this. These are not the racing seats. These are the, actually the comfort seats, but they're still carbon fiber, which I always say get the carbon fiber seat. So it's good. You can actually have a comfortable carbon fiber seat for once. And yeah, just crazy, crazy interior. And they now added the screen in the middle on the Huracan instead of just having the one here. It makes it a lot easier to use, but yeah, full carbon fiber doors. You have the door straps to open the doors, kind of like the Porsche GT cars. This thing is wild. And the wheels look crazy on this car. Huge improvement. This is probably the end of the line for the Huracons other than Technica. But yeah, I can't see how they're going to make this car any crazier than this. And then matte black SVJ. Very similar to the one we were in yesterday. And it has cool plate Lambo SVJ. Uh, Matt Black Coupe. There's two of those. This thing's freaking awesome. And with the tints, it just kind of looks murdered out, pretty much like a Batmobile. This thing's awesome. Just noticed S65 V12, and you'd never see these in this shape. I think it was one on Auto Trader for like 110, but I think the guy's out of his mind. I don't, I don't know what happened here. You can afford the V12, but you can't afford the right color. So. Okay, Black F40. This is Mr. Triggs' car. So repainted from factory. This car is actually modified. Uh, probably pushing five or six hundred horsepower. It's got custom seats, so it fits him a little bit better because it is very tight in there. Five-speed manual. He beats the hell out of this car. It's absolutely awesome. Yeah, really, really, really cool. We've seen this before in my videos. We're gonna do a lot of videos in the future. We're always around this car. Then also his yellow 458 Spider. These cars just age so well. I think best mid-engine Ferrari ever made. Uh, especially the spider, you gotta get the spider. It looks amazing, drives amazing, sounds amazing. And next to it is the Portofino. And there's two 328s. The red one's whatever. The white one's looking really, really cool. I don't think I've ever seen a white one. Tan interior as well. 
very cool. So I bought this a few weeks ago and finally we can really make it work because got the white Veyron right here, even though it's a black Veyron in the picture, but close enough. I actually think the Veyron in the picture is a Toronto car. I think it's uh, like one in like, yeah, like this year in the big collection here. But yeah, we got the band white Veyron here. New video. So we have the two dogs just chilling in front of the 918. Oh, you know. So we got the dogs right there with the 918. And Ferrari A12 GTS, Lamborghini Aventador SV Roadster with custom HRE wheels. And then we have the 599 GTO in a crazy spec. You just can only see it because all the way up top. And of course, best for last, Matt White LaFerrari paint matched FXXK wheels. You've seen this in a video a few weeks ago. A uh, pretty decent garage. We also got the Rolls Royces outside. You have the Conan right there, and the Ghost Mansuri right here. Hey guys, so again, I don't really know. This video is pretty much just a vlog of some random car stuff that I'm doing. Uh, I'm currently driving an S63 Coupe in Matt White. Uh, but yeah, I just want to say. If you guys aren't subscribed yet, please subscribe. We're going to be doing some crazy car stuff this summer, including Monterey Car Week, just every event I could possibly kind of get to. I'm going to be driving a lot of cars. This weekend, I'm going to be doing a video on a BMW E30 M3 Sport Evo. I'm honestly, again, I did the lightweight video a few weeks back. I don't know much about these older BMWs, but I'm starting to learn. I'm starting to take one out at a time and kind of, you know, try them out, figure them out, which I guess is the best way to learn about them. But yeah, if you're not already subscribed, please subscribe. And I'm going to have a ton of great content coming this summer. And I'm just going to, I'm trying to post this consistently as possible. I'm trying to get at least two, three videos out a week if I can. So bear with me if there's a few days gap, but I'm trying my best. Hey guys, we're in a car that's kind of very popular right now. People are, you know, buying them a lot, using them as daily drivers. It's the Rolls Royce calling in. Second time I've driven it. I have a weird opinion that not a lot of people have, but I think this car is shouldn't be as popular as it is. Well, I guess, I guess it is, but I'm not the biggest fan of it because I feel like it kind of takes away from the specialness of Rolls Royce. And what I've noticed is now you see so many more Rolls Royce on the road, and they are pretty much all Cullinans. It was just kind of how they were just kind of like made Lamborghini a lot more popular, and you just see them a lot more. But that's kind of understandable but a car like this is you know i don't think anybody's ever really driven a range rover autobiography and said oh this is not comfortable enough or a maybach gls or anything like that and said oh this is not comfortable enough i feel like a rolls royce shouldn't be a daily driver a rolls royce should be more special and i feel like once you make something an suv and you make it like that it just takes away from the car it's not as special as you know a fan you see a phantom that makes a statement and nowadays like you know you have just rich soccer mom was driving Collins. It's very easy to drive. It doesn't actually feel as big as it is, even though you'd think it would be massive, but a Phantom feels significantly bigger. But I just feel like it's not as special as a regular Rolls Royce. Just a little controversial opinion I have. I'm, I'm, maybe I'll do a video on this car, like a full video just on it, but yeah, that's just kind of what I think about this car. So obviously it does look very good inside. It does look like a Rolls Royce inside, but it just, again, I don't think it makes so much sense. It's not like, it's not a Phantom. It's not a Ghost. No, I think a ghost is a daily driver and speaking of ghosts here we have the ghost in front of us as well but like I just don't think a, a Colin makes as much sense as a Rolls Royce I think if you want a SUV daily driver buy a Range Rover buy a GLS Maybach but yeah that's just my opinion okay so we are in another NSX we filmed a video in a 1991 Two weeks ago in East Hampton now we're back in Toronto driving the 1992 so honestly pretty much the exact same car this one is a lower mileage one. This one just crossed 19,000 miles, which is pretty crazy for a car that's 30 years old. Um, but yeah, I, I really like these cars. This is the first one I ever drove. Like I drove this a few months, months back. I don't think I did a video on it. Um, but yeah, same thing. I'll probably do like a full video on this car. But yeah, we just we just picked it up from service. The car right now it does have a radio in it because apparently they all have this like radio issue that they all gotta get it replaced. Uh, but yeah, we're just driving it, uh, too bad, there is completely, like, standstill traffic. Uh, but yeah, I gotta drive it to Oakville. Decent day for this car, pretty nice out. 
but I always really like these cars. They feel very tight. They really just don't feel like they're 30 years old. You can very you can see out of them. They're not like a, this one doesn't have an exhaust at all. The one we drove a few weeks back did have a slight exhaust. So this sounds pretty normal, nothing crazy. So it's very civilized. Nobody really hates you. Everybody kind of likes you in this because it's a very cool car that you really don't see often, especially not completely stock like this one. Um, yeah, the only thing we did, we put like the newer wheels, like the 1995 wheels on it. Um, but yeah, the car is honestly perfect. Yeah, really fun car to drive. It's crazy to think that this car is really 30 years old and it just feels so nimble, so tight. The good thing about this car is, obviously ignore by the way the radio not being there, we're getting that replaced. Um, but yeah, the craziest thing is they built it in such a way where it doesn't really look outdated. It's very simple, there's not much going on in the inside. So it just doesn't feel like it's too old, like there's something here that's very old technology because it's just very simple. Obviously this one is the 5 speed manual, I would not be driving it if it was an automatic. But it's just very simple, very comfortable, nothing too flashy. It, I think that's why the car aged so well and is so loved. But I, I, I'm not a huge JDM guy, but I do really, really like this car. And of course, can't forget about the pop-up headlights. Very cool. You know something funny that I noticed? Like, I drive all these fancy cars, like the Ferraris, Rolls Royces, all that stuff. And nobody really pays attention to them, especially not here in Toronto where there's a ton of nice cars. Um, but driving a car like this, you know, I've probably been driving it for 10 minutes and just everybody gives you a thumbs up, everybody loves it, everyone's just so excited about it. This gets more, one more attention into more positive attention than any supercar really. I mean, this car really has a cult following, so it's kind of nice to see that everybody kind of loves you and everybody's interested in the car, not really in how much money the car costs. So everyone's always just happy giving you a thumbs up. Okay, so now we're driving the Mansuri Rolls Royce Ghost. This one is a 2012, I think, or 2011. But see, this feels a lot more like a like a Rolls Royce than kind of a Cullinan. Even though they both have very smooth ride height, but there's just something I find about when you're sitting low to the ground and get this ride height, it just feels like higher quality and more luxury. But yeah, from what, like my opinion, Rolls Royce is more about kind of the feel and the luxury of the driving rather than the features and the gadgets and the practicality you kind of get with it. Which is why I feel like once you make a Rolls Royce SUV and you make it practical, it kind of defeats the point of a Rolls Royce. Like, I think a Rolls Royce should just be a sedan. It shouldn't be anything that it's practical. It should be something that's luxurious for the sake of being luxurious. And that's more what this car is. Again, this is still not a Phantom. It's still not the top of the line, most luxurious one you can get. But this just feels a little more like a Rolls Royce than a Cullinan. Okay, so that was pretty much it for this video. I'm right now going to go pick up uh, an E30 M3 Sport Evo. I'm gonna make a video on that. I'm gonna drive it throughout the weekend, kind of test it out. So definitely stay tuned for that. Again, I don't know much about those cars, but I'm gonna learn. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna do that. I'm actually gonna go to a Porsche North event, but actually I'm gonna drive the GT4 first. And I'll see you guys in a few days when I post the M3 video.